Yeah, you wake up in the morning, it's slow. Let me tell you something. When I was my daughter's age, nine, if there was no school, I was out that fucking door at 8 a.m. Whether it was 8 a.m. or not, because I'm one of those motherfuckers that would move the clock fast on your mother. That bitch was waking up every day to spring fucking training time. You know, when you return the fucking clock, I remember my mother going, I don't know what the fuck happened to me today. I got to work two hours early. I wonder what happened. She said, I got to fix my watch. I know exactly what happened. I pushed that watch the fuck out. My daughter sits up there till about 10.30. Then at 10.30, I got to push her out. Go over and call for the fucking Pumas. And she'll walk down the corner. And she'll go out. You know, she's enthusiastic. Then another girl came over yesterday and played here till about 2. Then all the girls got together and they went to the fucking softball field. I mean, I'm, I'm on her to go out with Doug. You know, like I got to be on her. Like, you didn't have to tell me one fucking time. Like, at all. Like, that I had to go out. I was telling fucking uh, my wife the other day of what we did. We used to go to a fucking hardware store. We would go to Chinatown and buy those fucking Kung Fu stars and shit. Mm -hmm. Now, those things don't come sharpened. I don't know if you guys know that shit. When you see them in a magazine and you order them, they come back and you throw them on the wall and they don't stick. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck? I bought a fucking defective star. Nah, cocksucker. You got to take them down to the hardware store and the guy has to put them in a press. <clears throat> One of those presses. And then with like a rock. And they sharpen it and shit. So I remember we used to go there and he would go, guys, I don't really want to do this. Because if you take somebody's eye out, I'm responsible for it. Who, dog, whose eye are we going to take out? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Sharpen the stars and we'll buy fucking eight chair things. They used to have these chair caps, right? If you look at your mother's chairs or any chair at the house, all chairs, well, not these new fucking chairs, but chairs in the 70s and 80s and maybe some in the 90s. If you look at a chair and you pick it up and you turn it upside down, it's got those circles on the bottom that aren't really connected to the chair. It's just a loose piece, and it's got like a screw. What if you unloosen that screw and take that top off, you'll see that it's like a, I don't know how to call it, like a half moon maybe, where it's like, it's like a cup of soup, mm. but it's metal, and you could empty shit in there. And when you pull the chair out, there's a black thing in there with a screw that connects that's how it connects to that metal. But if you take the screw out of the fucking chair, you're left with the screw and the circular piece, and then you got to get a wrench and pull that piece out. And it, So now you just have a piece of metal. It's like a bowl. It's like an empty bowl. What you do is you get a crayon, whatever color crayon you like, green, red, pineapple. You take a fucking crayon and you melt it into those circles. And it gives it weight so you, they could play. You could play like bottle caps only with weight. Like if you take a bottle cap, like on a regular bottle of Pepsi, and you fling it, that motherfucker's going to go 80 miles because it has nothing to hold it down. But if you put something in there to kind of hold it down, so I don't know who did it. It had to be Puerto Ricans because they always play on the street. So Puerto Ricans fucking melted it. and So all those colors, so then you get a field that says like, one, two, three, four, five. Just like pool table. Just like pool. It's a box with numbers, and you got to go from one to two to three to four to five. And if you get to nine, you win the bottle cap. That's the moral of the fucking story. So you basically pay for those fucking caps. And there's big ones, there's medium ones, there's little ones. Who the fuck knows? I, I've looked for them on chairs so I could show people, but they, I can't find them anymore. So who gives a fuck? You know what I'm saying? Stuff the floor or something, like something like not to scuff the floor. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. I don't give a fuck about the floor. I just try to do the best I can. But it's just so weird that it's f the first fucking 420 in New York. They're doing shit at Webster Hall. There's got to be 20 concerts tomorrow night. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm supposed to go. I'll find out everything today. I'll find out anything in about an hour. I'm supposed to go to something this afternoon with the Dirty Jersey Boys, like a, an affiliate, because I do Laughing Gas, I do the Laughing Gas whatever brand, and one of the rappers on Dirty Jersey Boys, it works with the ice cream shop also, but I do Laughing Gas, and he does their other brand of weed. So what my 
what my buddy's trying to do from laughing gas is put us together tomorrow this afternoon. I think the party starts at like five. So I would go to that, say hello, shoot up to North Bergen, meet my buddy Devo, go get a little Cuban food. We've been over, we're overdue for a little Cuban dinner. And then I would shoot over tonight and see my girl Rachel at motherfucking the stand. I haven't been to the new stand at all. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see my man Brian Morton at the New York Comedy Club. And uh, I think those are the clubs I'll be working. The New York Comedy Club and the stand because, you know, Dangerfields is done. Kaput. God rest Dangerfields. I'm not a comedy seller guy. I'm not going to sit at the table and get beat up by other comics. I'm not in the mood for that. I'm too fucking old. Uh, I don't know what happens at Caroline's. I don't know what goes on at the comic strip. You know, Jimmy Florentine told me that the uh, the one on 74th Street's pretty good. I'll call him for spots there. And that's it. Like I told you motherfuckers, I ain't killing myself. This is nice and easy. I'm just getting back into the habit of writing every day, just sitting down. That's how it all starts. You know, I had to rewrite a... I had to write a, read a couple chapters in The War of Art, just uh, The Art of War, The War of Art, whatever the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. There's like 18 books on Sue, Johnny Bananas, who the fuck knows anymore. I just, you know, trying to do my best. And uh, I'll go over that a couple nights a week. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm, uh, I'm ready for the fucking city. I've been hanging out down here in South Jersey for fucking two years. I'm ready to go into the city Start cutting this motherfucker up, Jack. Just twice a week. I'm not going to kill myself. You know, come home early. I I think that the New York... I spoke to my man the other day. The New York Comedy Club on 20th Street does shows 7, 9, and 11. So I'll always try to catch the early show. Fucking... uh, I'll try just to fucking close the early show. Try new material. Listen, if I can't come up with 20 minutes by June... I'm a sack of shit. Do you know what I'm saying? 20 minutes I can come up with. That's why I, I decided to do this tour. Like I said, it's very easy. I got to call Bert today and see what the fuck is going on. I think the tour starts for me in Bristol, Tennessee, which I'm excited about. <clears throat> I'm a little scared because it's right outside of Knoxville. Last time I went to Knoxville, the girl sucks my dick and fucking her boyfriend, her husband found out and he wanted a fucking, he wanted his $40. Oh my God. 